one. Alright, dudes and dudettes. So, John is so Brian saying hello. Uh, you gotta start over. Uh, 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 we're not starting over. <laughs> Alright, so, um, first and foremost, in this episode, I would like to, right before we get into the whole episode, I want to thank uh, Dr. Shetler. That's Dr. John Shetler. That's with Sunrise Animal Hospital. Uh, this dude, if it wasn't for Shetler, I would not have been able to continue the last year uh, for multiple reasons. Number one, his willingness to help at any point in time. Number two, his willingness to let me barge his office at any point in time. And then number three, to dive into some things that he didn't particularly dive into too much before. And now he's so immersed in it and he's so damn good at it. It's ridiculous. So just before we start this episode, I want to thank Dr. Shetler because if it wasn't for him, there's a lot of animals that would be suffering right now that aren't. And there's a lot of animals, especially this one that we're about to show you and get into, that wouldn't be alive to this day if it wasn't for Dr. Shetler. So, my brother from another mother, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Enjoy the episodes, dudes. Boom. So, I haven't filmed the last couple of days. Hi, Munchkin. Boo. I haven't filmed the last couple of days because uh, I've been super stressed out. Obviously, you can see there's a shit ton of meds in front of me. And uh, we got the blood panels back on the old lemur here. And the sodium and the chloride was super low. That's your salts. Proteins were out of whack. Uh, extremely weird. Uh, the lemurs don't sweat, so they're not going to lose salt that way. She wasn't throwing up. No signs of diarrhea whatsoever. Um, like I said before, it was one day she just went from one hour to the next, kind of downhill. And then from there, uh, what started to show is that uveitis right there. I think I said uveitis before. It's two different things. Uveitis right there, which is the inflammation of the eye like we talked about before. Um, the reason for that, generally speaking, is because of an underlying issue with the lemur. So, honestly, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it one bit, uh, because like I told you guys on the channel, like, this is the real world of wildlife. Now, I've been dealing with primates for the better part of the last 15 to 20 years, and I've never had any experiences like this before. Uh, all my guys are still happy, healthy, and good. And you can see she's even getting a little snappy now, which I actually like. Um, yesterday and the day before, she wouldn't eat anything. She wouldn't drink anything. She wouldn't move. She still doesn't want to come out of the enclosure, which is extremely weird. Don't put your face in her face, Mama. So, um, I'm going to start filming so I can show you the progression. But this is uh, pretty much 24-hour, around-the-clock here with this thing. 
um, basically babying it, trying to get it to eat. Now, hold it, Mama, because i got to put an eye drop in. Trying to get it to eat anything at this point. So uh, I had to do some syringe feeding, and then I've also had to do some sub-Q fluids, which uh, is... Where are you at? Oh, where are you at? We're using... The regular good old Shizer over here. Anyway, we're using the regular old fluids, same as you and I would get, but from the vet. So it's for animal use only, even though we could use it on ourselves hypothetically. But the eye itself is, as you can see, fucking terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I'm gonna put a drop in here real quick. Miss that. Yes, I'm trying to do a phone and a drop at the same time. Don't Why move. Why not mommy phone? Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Alright. I'm not the one that's moving. She is. Alright. Well, you got control. So, we're going to document the next couple of uh, days to show you guys the turnaround, but. We still need to figure out where the salt went, what happened, why it's causing it, because obviously there's another underlying issue with the lemur, and she's off balance. She's not able to walk around like she should be, like she should be bouncing around all over the place, and she does calm down like this and hang out with the kids at night, but generally speaking, she's going to be a maniac for a couple hours before she starts being cuddly like this, so... She's definitely not feeling too hot. Not really something I want to document, but I want to show you guys what it takes and the whole deal with these guys because at the end of the day, if you're not willing to stop everything you're doing, just like I did um, with my YouTube and all that other stuff, uh, because I had some animals I had to focus on, obviously the cat and this one here, plus all the other reptiles in the house. Like Everybody needs attention, but now I have two animals that need spe uh, the special extra attention and that requires me to back off social media and normal life in itself. And if you can't do that and you're not willing to do that, then, you know, unfortunately enough, you can't, you can't be around stuff like this because that's what it takes 24 hour nonstop, waking up through the middle of the night, making sure she's good over and over and over. We're gonna get you better, mama. Boom. What are you doing, Bims? This is day number five with whatever issue she's got going on. So, you know, like I said before, the blood panels um, have given us an idea of what's going on, what's the problem, uh, but we don't know what the underlying issue is, so we still don't know what caused the original issue. She's looking better today, she's balanced, she's moving around, she's a little bit more active, which I'm happy to see. The eye itself um, looks actually a little bit worse. But at this point in time, I would actually rather see her the way she is now than, uh, well, I'd like to see both for I could get better and she could get better at the same time. Then that would be perfect. All right, dudes, dudettes, we're at day six with this uber freakishly weird situation that's going on with Bimini here, so. I'm gonna show you here. Okay. Come here, Mama. Hold her. Oh, I'm not gonna bother. Look at the f zombie eye going on here. Oh my God, bless woman, Mama. So something internally happened with this animal. We're still not sure. We have not pinpointed what exactly went on, but what we do know is that it caused her sodium and her chloride levels to drop drastically, which is weird because we don't know where it went. So usually that's your salt levels for anybody out there that didn't catch that. That usually happens with a lot of vomiting or a lot of diarrhea, none of which was happening with Bimini on any of those days. So this was literally a dramatic shift from one hour to the next where she was fine and then she wasn't fine. And she had no issues with her eyes, which you'll see 
or you've already seen. I'm not sure I'm gonna put this video together, but if you haven't seen it, I'll show you right now. But if we've already done it, then we've already done it. But her eyes were fine. She was just lethargic. She wasn't acting right. And then two days later, that started to show as far as the uveitis, which is obviously anything with itis is inflammation of, so the uvian tract or whatever behind the eyeball is what blew up and it's caused whatever the hell is going on here. So it started out as some milky white stuff and the eyeball just keeps getting worse. Now by day three, when the eyeball first started showing, we had a lot of issues because she wasn't eating, she wasn't moving, she wasn't doing anything. She wouldn't even come out of the enclosure, very much not like her. So day four, um, I literally thought I had reserved myself to bracing for impact because I didn't think the poor girl was gonna make it. I honestly didn't. Um, she couldn't move, she couldn't walk. She literally would take a step and fall over, a step and fall over, probably because the eyeball was so swollen and it's probably giving her some sort of vertigo, um, especially on that side, because she was always falling to that side. Now we're at day six or seven, and I'm saying that from day four, day three actually, when we started all the meds and stuff like that. So it's been six or seven days of meds. I'll find out exactly here in a minute. But the animal itself, Bimini is doing phenomenal. She's done a complete 180. Let me check her temperature right now just to see what's going on. But uh, the fever itself was astronomical. She was at like 105, so she was cooking on the inside. So that was our first worry. And the second was obviously the eyeball. And uh, I'll take my wins when I can. Obviously, I would much rather her be 100% in every way, shape, or form. However, I'll take, she's at 100.3. That's fairly normal, a little higher than I want it, but a little lower than it was, so I'll take it. She was at 98 two days ago, 99 yesterday, but it also could be because we're heating up the rooms a little bit, it's getting colder outside. Um, but back to the sodium chloride, we were unsure of where it went. She doesn't sweat, they don't sweat. Um, she wasn't throwing up, no diarrhea, literally no reason for any of this to go down whatsoever. Truly a freakish event that I have never experienced in all of my days. So I'm gonna hit her with a doxycycline now. Let's see if I could do this. Probably not. Let's see if I can set this down here. I'll try and work it. And now we're getting squeaks and noises, which if you saw that first day, I could pretty much do whatever I wanted with her and she wasn't making any movements and she wasn't caring about anything. She was done so, which is not what I want to see. I would much rather see her fight back and get angry and upset for being poked and prodded. So I was doing fluids for a couple of days and then by day number five, when I tried to hit her with the fluids again, um, she was definitely not having it, which was awesome because for anybody that doesn't know how we give the fluids here, we're doing it sub Q. So it's pretty much in between the got to open my arm. It's pretty much in between the shoulder blades. And then I blow a bubble in her back like an punch back in Notre Dame. And that's how I get the fluids in there. And she was letting that happen. We were putting about 60 mLs every day into her, uh, which definitely bumped up her salt levels, which was good because she needed the fluids and the salts because now she's eating. She's making noise. She's being a little rambunctious. She's acting normal. And I love her very much. Now we're just only worried about that eye. But we are very, very worried about the eye because look at that shit. I'm sorry, Mama. So let's see how it rolls out. We can only do what we can do. So next stop, back to the vet. All right. So we're going back to the vets here. So basically what happened, which you guys aren't gonna see because every time we post anything graphic, we kind of get flagged uh, for doing it. So we're trying to do this in a different way where we're not super graphic. We're going to figure out how we can post these medical episodes a little bit differently because I feel like showcasing Dr. Shetler's expertise also 
We, as shitty as the situations are, we do have a lot of fun in the office, but then we kind of get flagged from YouTube every time we do it, and we don't know how long it's gonna take before they just strip the channel for having medical stuff, even though it's very, ex it's extremely important, it's pertinent, it's relevant, and it's not like, it's, it's in a, literally a medical professional's office that we do this. So we're doing this one a little bit differently. We're gonna blur out the graphic stuff so that you guys don't have to see all that stuff. There's a small clip in it, and then, uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, like all the credit goes to Dr. Shetler. Like, yes, I was able to catch this right as soon as it happened. If you haven't seen the first episode of Bimini, you're gonna wanna go back before you get into all this stuff right here. Um, and go to chapter one of Bimini to see exactly what happened because we caught this two days before the eye even blew up. So basically what happens from what you guys just saw is it went from zombie eye to an abscess. Then we found out what the real problem was, which was an abscess in the eye itself. So, which was probably caused, basically causing her whole body to shut down because it's so close to the brain and the infection was so bad and then it finally just exploded and I'm gonna save you guys those pictures. I'll post them on Patreon and then all the Patreons can have the actual video of this little mini surgery thing here, the little minute and a half we're about to show you, plus a bunch of pictures that nobody's missing out on, I promise you, it's disgusting. So basically it went from abscess to it blew up and then it kind of glued her eyes shut. So we made the decision, a tough decision, but a good decision, and this was Shetler's choice to take that eye out. And I had a feeling it was going towards that anyway, she was already blind on that side by the time the zombie eye hit, um, and then, You'll see a progression. So what we're gonna show you right after this clip is a small progression. We're gonna show you a short clip when she was trying to walk around and get her bearings when her eye was still in. And you can see that she's walking on her knuckles. She can't open her hands. She's not sturdy. She's not really bouncing around. She's not really active. And that was in the beginning stages where we were basically afraid she wasn't gonna make it. And what you're gonna see towards the end of the video is a much different Bimini. So she's not completely out of the woods yet. We still walk. Uh, work on her. Shetler sees her about two, three times a week until we can get the eyeball basically to stop tearing underneath. And there's an infection that we're still dealing with to this day. However, Bimini has gained a pound and a half and she is all back to her normal self. So she's a nightmare monkey all over again, which I'm wonderfully happy in every way, shape and form to see her be the nightmare that she's supposed to be. And when I say nightmare, I mean that in a very sweet and a very positive way because I love my little nightmare monkey. And now she's just a one-eyed wonder. So we're going to get right into this here. We're going to show you guys what's going on over here next to us while we edit this stuff out here. And it's blurred up for you guys for your... Uh, uh. Uh, see, there's the blur right there yeah, for your viewing entertainment. And then we're going to get right back into the happy side of things and give you the happy ending there. So Bimini is doing wonderful, and we'll explain that here in a second. Check it out. Boom. 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 That's fine. It's horrible. That's Brian. <laughs> Don't listen to Brian. Right again. <laughs> All right. Voice over, dudes. All right, so we're going to be speaking over myself, which is pretty much a metaphor of my life, just me trying to talk over myself, running through a cornfield backwards naked. Can't even speak. Naked. Put that one together in your brains, my friends. All right, so you can see Bimini's not feeling good right here. She can't walk. She can't open her hands. Somebody sweeping aggressively with a broom. Bim starting to walk around again. You can see that's the only part that I don't like. She's not really stretching them hands out. Well, she's I think she yawning. Should. I saw her one, so. But she's got grip. Can I see those hands, Mama? So, in a nutshell, not doing so doing? hot. What's your zombie eye? Not one hand. You okay, Mama? So, all in all, what you're seeing right now is basically the massive infection inside this eyeball that uh, is obviously so close to the brain. And her fever was way up. And just to see her licking on the hands and stuff like that is good because she had lost so much salt. So we were trying to get any salt into her that we possibly could which was another reason why we did the fluids what we can do with you 
We're gonna what save you your doing? life. Huh? You're a mess. So you can see she looks a little disheveled, not taking care of her fur. She looks a little off. I mean that eyeball looks like it should have a pirate patch over it. They grow. Come, come, come. And I also thought at this point that she was deaf. So I thought that the infection had messed her up so badly that she couldn't hear either. And you could see her barely, barely keeping her balance. And you're going to see a massive change. So after this little clip, we're going to get into the surgery. And then after we get into the surgery, you get a happy little ending. Oh boy, I don't know who's doing what in the background, but it's far and aggressive. So for days, she wouldn't even come out of the cage. She just kind of huddled in the corner. So this what are you was. Doing? She ain't doing shit, Big guy. Up. What you doing? Nothing. What you doing? Barely making it by. What you doing? Barely what? making it by. How what many you times are you gonna ask me? What you doing? Did seriously? Knock it off. All right, so you could clearly see that um, she's just not doing too hot here. Just off balance. Not gonna grape. No, not gonna eat the grape. We're not gonna eat the damn grape. She's not gonna eat the grape. No grape. And she was losing so much weight. This was such a stressful time. And then now surgery. Okay, so we were fairly quiet during this whole thing, and uh, the whole deal was is I had the entire surgery on film. I do believe that. He, oh, 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 man, that's gross. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did that on purpose. Yep, mm -hmm. yep, just to show you guys what we were dealing with there. But that is her eyeball that we've already removed. And I believe uh, most of this footage is either lost in the cloud. Thank you, Apple. Or we had it on either Shetler's phone, um, Christie's phone, Carrie's phone. It could be anywhere because this, again, was from maybe November. I think November 21st was when the problem actually first arised. So I had whatever I had on my phone and which was this part of the surgery. So the eyeballs already removed and basically what he's doing is he's tying up all the tracks in the back. Uh, I believe he's looking to make sure that the infection is cleared out completely. And again, like super thanks to this dude right here. Like he really got in there and did exactly what I needed to do. And if it wasn't for Shetler, we wouldn't have this beautiful little girl around with us. So, uh, just continuing on here with the surgery. And he's tying up everything from the inside. And then we're basically going to go from the inside and then tie up the outside. So, some of this is going to go to the Patreon footage. And I'm going to show you some other pictures as well. But I promise you guys, for any regular viewers out there, you're not missing out. It is fairly... Oh, oh nip slip. It is fairly graphic. Uh, you're not missing out on anything that you're going to want to see. This kind of gives you the idea. So he's stitching up the inside and then the outside. And then we're going to show you guys a little clip of basically afterwards so after we did the surgery uh her eye got better obviously bimini got better and well i say her eye got better but it's far and gone but uh she got better and then what happened is the tears basically fill up so the eye was swelling so that's the next clip you're gonna see is basically shetler and i after we drain that eye and this is like shetler's new girlfriend now I'm going to let this roll out. Here we go. Watch this. You like that? Yes, you All right. So I, I, I admit, I didn't film the procedure that we just did, but I'm going to film this because it's fucking hilarious. Hey, no, don't you get into you that. The whole hey, thing. Don't you bite me either. Bite him. Listen, oh, you want the whole damn thing. You can't have it all. I'm pacing it. Listen, I'm going to move this over here. This dried fruit. What are you doing, you brat? What are you doing, you brat? This is... Can you sit? Doc John's what? New Come girlfriend. here. Come have that one. Here, have that one. I've got more. But and listen, I'm going to give it to you. You can see that eyes deflated. So we did, uh, it was a minor surgery. We just put a catheter in there and kind of drained it. And then Doc squeezed it out. So we flattened out that eye. We were just waiting on some confirmation. 
we kind of felt like we had to do it, but we wanted some confirmation from Swinger, who is an eye specialist. So, what was Vix's expression? Wow. Let's drain like, out of the wow, cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> wow, let's drain that. So, but it was all tears, no blood, no pus, no nothing, very clean. So, and she clearly likes fruit. And it took us like 30 seconds, so there wasn't much to film, but you know, that eye's back to normal. You can see her already bouncing good. around. Good little girl. Baby. All right, so this is oh, after wow, that. And you can get a good look at her eye here in a second. You feel better, huh? Or lack better? thereof. Come over here and bite me. That's for you. Oh, you didn't even bite me? Look at that. So this is when she really starts to get her bearings back together. And this is like days after the surgery where she already perked up, started slamming food. And it was just a wonderful sight all the way around. Rubbing that butt. That's how these lemurs scent. She's a female. I'll let you guess where that comes from. And we're going to see a monkey bounce away here in a second. Bye. All right, now this is a little bit more present day. Uh, we're going to give you guys a better update on Bimini because this is still old footage that was on my phone from Lord knows how long ago. Uh, remember, this happened months and months and months ago. November 21st was the date that I actually noticed something was going on. And then that Monday following was when we got on it and started doing what we needed to do. But this is normal behavior from this lemur who's an absolute nightmare, probably digging in my trash, get the oh, out of my trash can, get out of the trash can, constantly looking for candy that the kids leave in there, so we have to be careful with that, but this is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen, so as stressful as this situation was, and it was probably one of the more stressful, situ oh my god, the more stressful situations that I've had to go through uh, when it comes to wildlife in general, just because of the simple fact that, uh, you know, she's my lemur, she's my girl. I can watch this go down with other animals a little easier. That doesn't mean it's easy in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to see any animal go through pain, but when it's something that you've raised from a tiny little baby, it does make it a little bit more difficult to watch it go down, especially, like I said, dude, there was many a time through the, oh, shit. There was many a time through the first couple of days that I truly did not feel she was going to make it. And this is what we like to see. So this is crazy monkey time. So I knew as soon as she rounded the corner, went straight to my bed and laid down and wasn't doing this. Because she will snuggle down with the kids and stuff. And she will sleep with these kids. Um, but she doesn't do that until all this nonsense for about two and a half hours. So once she gets it out of her system, then she will lay down and snuggle and all that good stuff. But uh, it does take a hot minute. So as soon as I saw her round the corner and lay straight down, that was it. I already knew something was wrong. That's why I tell everybody it always pays to pay close attention to the behavior of your animals because had I not known that and had I just disregarded it and been like oh well she's tired or oh it's normal or this and that um, she would have been dead if I didn't make the phone call to Shetler that day which was a Saturday and didn't have it rolled out for that Monday um, she would not be here this day like it was just purely just the best timing ever number one and then we have obviously dr shetler that really slammed things into perspective and we were just all over the place he was contacting swinger he was doing all kinds of research we were trying to figure it out still to this day we don't know exactly what caused the abscess in the eyeball right now we're you know basically claiming it as a freak accident because i haven't seen anything like it in my you know 20 some odd years of doing this so in a nutshell, we still don't know, but this is just a perfect example of what we go through. And it's not like I've never gone through anything that, you know, like a freak accident before. It's not like I've never gone through animals being sick before, but this one was really, really rough. Uh, I did not think she was going to come out of it. Most of the time it's little nicks, bruises, scrapes, things we have to stitch, meds we have to do, you know, you know, maybe a respiratory infection here and there, uh, just odds and ends that we have to deal with, but nothing too crazy. And this was absolutely insane and terrifying all the way through. And what you're seeing here is probably two months into the whole thing, like two months after we found out. And after about a month of her having that eyeball out, she gained her bearings where she could kind of see where she was going. She knew what she was doing. It took her a little bit of getting used to not being able to see out of that right side anymore. But uh, as you can see, she's scrubbing her butt all over all my shit as per usual running amok trying to steal my trash can shit as per usual 
back to being her normal self. So it's a full circle happy ending, which I didn't think I was going to be able to give you. And again, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I didn't film a lot in the beginning because it just felt wrong. But on the other end, I did want to let everybody know the reality of the situation when it comes to owning any wildlife. Like it is extremely possible at any point in time for dogs, cats, exotics, snakes, lizards. It doesn't matter what the animal is. Just like people, they can get sick. And just like people, they can die from those sicknesses. So if you're not paying close attention, to what you got going on and you don't have a good solid vet or the means to provide for that animal right then and there then bad things happen so that's why i always tell people especially you know if you're quote unquote running a rescue or doing whatever it is or if you're going to own any of these animals outright period whether it's for personal reasons whether you run a sanctuary whatever the case may be if you can't drop everything you're doing and go straight to the vet right then and there to fix an animal well, there's a solid chance that that animal can die. So if you can't stop what you're doing, or if your life has to, let me say it the best way that I possibly can. If you can't fit your life into the animal schedule, then bad things will always happen. So I had to literally change everything that I was doing for two months to be able to get what you're seeing right now and if i didn't literally change everything that i was doing then you wouldn't see crazy monkey time right now and this is crazy monkey time that would not be happening because if i ignored it for even one minute this monkey would no longer be alive so sharing this with you is absolutely because i'm watching it on the screen as i'm doing my voiceover and brian's behind me listening to me talk like a moron as per usual so <coughs> Yeah, boy, got that diarrhea of the mouth just slanging. So we wouldn't even be able to be making these jokes right now had I not paid it. Oh, my God, it's over. Holy shit, we've ran too long. All right, let me see. Let me see if I can do this. All right, you know, if you guys were staring at what I was staring at right now, you'd see a big screen of darkness, and then right next to it, it's almost as if we have, like, oh, man. Fuck your footage, man. They'll figure it out. We're going to leave you guys in the dark. I'm going to explain what we're seeing right now. It's almost like if you were in an airplane, that's what I'm looking at right now. That's how many buttons and weird shit is all over the place. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's your Bimini update. I'm not being dramatic in any way, shape, or form. This is literally like if you were staring at what I was staring at, you'd be just as confused as I was. Thank God he walked in at the time that he did because I wouldn't even be able to press end on this. Much like when we do our live streams. So uh, there it is, ladies and Ladies and gentlemen, that's your Bimini update. She's doing wonderful. We're going to give you a present day Bimini update within the next few weeks. And we are going to be back to our regular uh, scheduled programming. Uh, this week, we are starting to go full blast. Say it, Brian. Full blast. Oh, he shit out on the last one. All right. Boom. Did you press the fucking button? No. What a torturous son of a bitch.